Kate Shanahan, Dr. Kate Shanahan's book, Deep Nutrition, which I found a great resource illustrating things like you mentioned earlier, like several percent of canola oil uh, is actually essentially a form of trans fat. 5%. Uh, or 5%, exactly. So she has a lot of detail. She's deep dived in this. But yeah, I'd agree. Excessive poly, uh, the traditional ancestral diet was around 1% uh, linoleic acid approximately. And now our average diet with modern processed foods and all these vegetable oils is around 10%. So we're 10 times. Uh, it clear in the literature shows that omega-6 fats and poovas are needed and they're essentials. And they reckon the threshold you need is somewhere like half a percent of your diet is plenty. 1% is what we got at random over a million years. And now we're 10%. The, some of the research on this is stunning. We know we've seen human trials where it apparently shows a benefit in heart disease over a few years. But remember, eating more PUFA may mitigate metabolic syndrome in the short to immediate term, a medium term, and may give you a slight improvement. But in the long term, there's countless negative implications. We even had one trial with extra polyunsaturates instead of saturated fat, and the heart disease went down a little, mortality, but the overall mortality didn't change. And that team, I think it was the veteran study, a year later quietly published a paper indicating that the cancer mortality had gone up and that's why it cancelled out the heart disease reduction. So there's a lot of connections and, and animal experiments relating to the oxidizing of, of these PUFAs in the 90s that clearly showed an impact on um, carcinogenesis and mammary carcinogenesis. We put a good few of those in the appendix and everyone ignored them. But they showed that at 1% linoleic, which is the ancestral, there was no effect on carcinogenesis and on acceleration, you know, in tumor encrusted rats. And they showed that two or three or 4% then, you got an increase in cancer's rate of growth. And after three or 4% linoleic in the diet, if you kept bringing it up to 10 or 12, it didn't get worse. So what was interesting there is, if three or 4% is too much really, and we have everyone at between six and 14% now, you're not even gonna see a signal in epidemiology between linoleic acid and, and cancer because everyone's above the threshold. And you could go on about the other trials as well. Uh, there's one that was done multiple times in rats. They infused the rats with alcohol 24 hours a day, right? Happy rats. <laughs> and then they tested them with beef tallow in the diet, with uh, pork, I think it was, yeah, maybe 3 or 4% linoleic, and sunflower, 20%. And they showed without question that they could not cause liver damage. We all know how fundamental liver is. So this is a great indicator. They could not cause liver damage in the rat when it was on beef tallow. When it was on three or 4% linoleic with the pork fats and some added linoleic, I think, they got very dramatic liver damage with the same amount of alcohol and the sunflower was just off the scale. So they basically titled the paper Linoleic acid is required for liver damage from alcohol in our animal model. Not even that it makes it worse, but you require above 1% to even get liver damage from alcohol. So we could go on, but there's so much science around the problems with these fats, but because the orthodoxy sold them as heart healthy, all of that's ignored. The human trials that backfired, like the Sydney heart, the Minnesota, the Helsinki businessman's trial, not, not one many people know about, they're all ignored. I mean, what do you reckon, Paul? The negative evidence is all ignored and a few weak trials are exalted.